by plus two speed, and those Angelias can run 18 inches up the table. Very, uh, very potent ability, but also one that you have to be careful with. You don't want to spread your army out too much, wind up putting something out of position, especially against Circle, again with those teleports uh, that Crump might be able to use. It's a lot easier for him to respond and take advantage of an out of position war beast. Charles, though, a very competent player when it comes to Legion overall. Um, highly active in the Seattle game meta. Also a big high command player. Yep. With his own high command podcast with a couple of his friends. Mm -hmm. Something that I've really enjoyed listening to as the as that game takes off in the competitive arena a bit. Yeah, with the expansions and everything, listen to their takes on how to do deck construction and approaching the game differently uh, with new winds of war and location cards has been a lot of fun. Uh, definitely the same kind of uh, keen tactical insight that he puts into War Machine and Hordes as he does into the High Command podcast. So we see a run being initiated. Uh, pulled back, considering here. Using a lot of time in this opening move. Uh, one of the things about these two lists is that you kind of expect the game to potentially end quickly. Neither one is yeah. necessarily gunning for a scenario victory here. Both these lists very well tailored to the assassination. I would be very surprised with a scenario victory with this particular scenario in this particular matchup. Both of these guys are going to be fighting right up in each other's face yeah. from turn two on, possibly even turn one. As you talked about with uh, Will Pagani in your interview following the end of round two uh, in his game against Crump, which he lost by just an eighth of an inch in terms yeah. of scenario victory, uh, Crump certainly has made an issue overall through the Invitational of ignoring scenario and uh, fighting his way through to the assassination. Both, both uh, lists definitely taking care of that. You see Crump waving to his mom there. So we'll pass that message on. Both players don't always encourage him. Don't. Well, he can't hear me anyway. <laughs> uh, but a lot of excitement here. Um, obviously, getting to this round of the Invitational with its new bracket system. Right. Um, it's very exciting for these players, and winning the Invitational is a uh, mark of pride for these players who uh, compete at all levels, including Iron Gauntlet. For many of them, uh, Charles, you'll likely see his Iron Gauntlet tokens there. So a classic opening gambit here where the spawning vessel moves up and the uh, attendants start murdering each other and throwing each other into the pot. Fails to wound on one of them. Yep, hits him over the head with a stick and doesn't do anything. And gets the third one. So that'll do for the pot, giving it three. And now spawning out comes vessel pops the out shredder, shredder that you're expecting. So... Crump expects, expressing some uh, sarcastic surprise that it would be a Shredder first and not a Harrier. So, see the Legion tech working right away with the meat pot in its bodies. Shredder activating next. So, Shredder goes rabid and then runs. I'll give it some extra speed there. It's an interesting choice for turn one when it's already that far up the field. Depending on where he's deciding to run it here. So Still has movement remaining as he checks control area. Quick measurement here. Trying to make sure that Shredder stays within Vale's control area. Just on the edge of it. See him trying to Likely get that Shredder into threatening position for potentially a stone. Trying to take out those shifting stones and their teleport abilities quickly. One of the things that we didn't mention earlier when talking about the scenario is that it does have kill box. So the Warlocks will be forced to move forward a bit. Uh, neither of these Warlocks particularly tanky. So having to be closer to the action may pose some additional risks. See a very short run from the Seraph. Oh, just in a slipstream. Just an advance with a slipstream. 
That's what that Fury was for. So we see Vale slip streaming forward. See those metal iron gauntlet uh, Fury tokens, Fury and Focus tokens. Dropped on the table there with a clatter. So another important note that we uh, didn't mention yet, but you'll probably know from uh, the Iron Gauntlet destruction scenario uh, that was played on camera last night, uh, or two nights ago, excuse me, was that the objectives cannot be targeted or damaged until the second player's second turn. So uh, we've got a couple of turns here where those scenarios are basically inviolable. So Vale activating next, advances forward, checks her control to the Shredder. Well, and now we see why that Shredder was sent so far <laughs> forward. He's about to get an Oraculus thrown at his back so that spells can be cast probably on the uh, non-stealth shifting stone there. Yep. So we see the first Oraculus hit on a seven, no problem in the back. Shredder takes a little bit of damage from that Oraculus shot though. So, uh, likely be looking at an obliteration here, trying to eliminate one of those stones early. Well, and if he turns off the ability to double teleport on the top of turn yep. one, that's a pretty important win for him here. Big advantage for Charles at that point in the assassination game that these two players are likely playing right now. Though by no means guaranteed, it is also possible to destroy that Gallows Grove with the blast damage. Which would also this would be great. So we see that the obliteration is in range. And a boosted attack on the obliteration just to absolutely make sure it hits. Charles not wasting any time here. Once you've invested that much fury and that a much resources yeah. into something, you might as well boost it. A gigantic roll there as well. 17 on the damage roll. Absolutely obliterating that stone. Just, he uh, is also the boosting is. the blast damage. So only three points to the tree, however. So the Gallus Grove is alive with two points. Uh, veil now out of Fury, though. So we see the Ravagor running. Does not benefit from the plus two speed. That is only for her flying war beast. So the Ravagor not going to get quite as far up the field with the run. Moving to uh, position itself between... Uh, Crump's army and uh, Vale. Yeah, I'm expecting a bit of a wall of heavy dragon flesh here to keep Vale safe. You have to be really, and Charles is very aware again of that ranged potential of uh, Kruger. So we see a proxy base getting swapped in for that Angelius so that he can get them base to base. Yep, so the wings don't bump into that Ravagor. Yep, and being completely flush is, of course, critically important since. Charles doesn't want any line of sight to be drawn. Crump kind of pointing out that with that stone's death, uh, the double teleport ranged assassination from Kruger is not an issue this, this next turn, but Charles playing it safe, as he should. See a run with that other Ravagor, getting into position to be able to shoot next turn. Likely going to see that Angelius next fly forward. I wouldn't be surprised here to see it zip pretty far forward because he now doesn't have to fear that teleport as much. It looks like he goes toe on the hill. Yep. no reason not to. Wold Stalkers, even with a Zephyr, likely out of range at the amount that he just ran that Angelius. Well, the Angelius does have sufficient defense, especially with the elevation. Exceptionally good, yes. To make it difficult to get too many Wold Stalker hits on him, even if they could gain range. So you see the Scythian run forward. See those non AD'd uh, Shepherds advance forward. Do a little bit of fury management here. So Charles is exactly where he wants to be on Fury, so we're not going to see any uh, conditioning happening here, and Charles passes his turn. So a pretty huge first turn, honestly, as far as first turns go. Yeah, I mean, even if uh, it was only one model, it was an important one. Right. And it was a vector that we don't usually see with uh, 
being able to destroy an opposing model of that uh, sturdiness yep. from the very first turn of the game. I mean, he's potentially given up that shredder uh, and the tenacity with it, but it's a trade that I think anyone would be free to make. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, Gallows Grove there is using its strange growth ability to teleport over into the woods. Now triggers Prowl so that it gains stealth since you can't see the tree for the forest. <laughs> see Crump measuring his control area from Kruger. Apparently wanting a little revenge on that shredder. Charles mentioning that Veil 2 really brought obliteration into its own as a spell that gets cast more often than not. Uh, her high fury and her feet obviously allowing it to get thrown out multiple times, whereas yeah. casters like the Butcher uh, kind of use it as a last resort. Yeah, when the Butcher is just built for doing things other than right. uh, spell assassination, for sure. So, so we see a miss uh, against the Shredder. Trying to cast uh, Gallows, I believe. Kruger advances. Now Kruger's going to take a shot at him with the Lightning Spear. And this may be the Shredder's doom because these Lightning Bolts that Kruger shoots out have sustained attack. No problem hitting so the Shredder there. Now that he's hit, he's going to get hit until he is gone. And it's just straight, uh, straight dice, so... Nine to the one on that one, leaving the Shredder with two. See another purchased attack likely. There's no reason to leave yep. that Shredder standing. So he buys the second attack, and uh, the minimum he could possibly do is the two more damage yep. that the Shredder has. So we see Kruger <laughs> now casting. Crump casts the Stormwall spell next. Yep to limit enemy models' ranged attacks uh, while they're in the control area. They'll be very effective against the Angelius uh, models on the upcoming turn. Probably not so much on the Ravagors due to their exceptionally long range. Uh, Storm Wall also allows him to control the AoE deviations a bit, choosing the direction that AoEs deviate. Crump, Crump shifts forward. the uh, still intact unit of Shifting Stones here, uh, carefully keeping them in formation. And this unit does have stealth, but I would not be at all surprised to see an eyeless sight shot <laughs> take out one of those stones to then fully shut down the teleport yep. shenanigans that Crump had as such a big part of his army's plan. Yeah, the placement here is kind of curious to me. Honestly, I would have expected him not to move that one stone so close to the Ravagors, given their Eyeless Side ability. Ravagor not really struggling between both that Angelius if it really wants to, and the Ravagor over there. Well, and we know that the Ravagor is not currently in Kruger's control area. Yep. And even if it was, it could just advance up a bit and have plenty of range to, to knock that stone out. It is somewhat protected by the objective. Somewhat. See a run from the Woldstalker unit on Crump's left, dashing into the trees there. Gain some benefit of concealment. He does have numerical superiority, so advancing aggressively with this, these ranged units will then allow him to uh, gain quite a bit of use out of them in the next turn or two. Quick check on control er or command area there for the uh, wool stalker unit leader. Crump determining what to activate next. Looks like he's going with the other unit of Druid Stoneward and Wold Stalkers. 
Oh, nope, excuse me, the Warp Wolf Stalker. Decides to run with the Warp Wolf Stalker. Threading through that gap there. He's got one inch left. Measures his control from Kruger to make sure that Warp Wolf is not going to get side the end next turn. And Warp Strength uh, just automatically. So next up, Crump trying to determine what to activate next. I think the uh, loss of the stone so early kind of threw him off his first turn uh, movement here. He's not yeah, moving with kind of the same uh, a bit same less commitment. deliberate. Yeah, yeah, a little less trying to figure out how to react here now. So now the other Warp Wolf Stalker also running forward. Uh, I believe also warping for strength since he didn't declare something, and that's the default. Not much else on the uh, Stalkers that is really useful at this point since he has no Prowl targets. We right. see a Ryle there as well. Well, he does have a uh, Swamp Gobber somewhere. Right? Somewhere. I'm not quite sure where those got uh, wound up being deployed. So Prowl might have been a possibility. Not that it matters against the ranged attacks that are across the... So the only it. thing that could shoot at all without Iowa's sight is Veil. Another shift from the uh, stones that are no longer a complete unit. Advancing the... Uh, there we go. Those are the... There's uh, the Swamp, swamp gobbers. gobbers. So Kruger's in the cloud. Yep. Definitely a little rattled from that loss of the stone as... With the cloud right there, uh, forgetting to warp for Prowl. Well, there's so much uh, Iowa sight across the table that those typical circle defenses aren't going to prove very effective. So Kruger's in the cloud uh, as well. See the so Griffin both of the Rotterhorn Griffins are kind of forming a wall here in front of Kruger, trying to make sure that they minimize any possible assassination attempt on the all-critical Warlock. Mm -hmm. Gorax advances a bit, riles for a few fu Fury so that Kruger will have the right number of Fury tokens on his next turn. Una advances a bit. Gets a little closer to her Griffins. Behind a wall of models, for now at least. Feeling pretty safe. And she has transfers. It's a bold clumping for uh, an army that has access, such easy access to continuous fire. Yeah, I, it would be hard not to take some Ravagor shots yep. into the middle of that. But Ravagor shots into the middle of that mean... No They're shots on the stones. Shooting the shifting stones. See a phase jump there from one of the black clads getting within range of the stone. The black clad wayfarer specifically. Yep. Another phase jump. The other black clad wayfarer chooses to run instead. Crump considered the phase jump, but uh, <laughs> and places him as if he phase jumped, but he did declare a run. The Druid and Stone Ward, or Druid, Stone Ward, and Wold Stalker unit also running. Well, there's a there's a potential that the uh, the check for the run was to phase jump next turn. That's true. He can always check his melee range, and that's the two inches. That's the same as the phase jump distance. But you might as well, like and you said, a phase jump hit now, phase jump later. Right. Get you the same result. So last but not least, the... Other Gallows Grove moves to a fairly uh, rear position in the army to save its uh, uh, spell channeling ability for later. So we see Serenity taking one off the uh, Angelius. And Vale goes back up to eight. So Serenity allowing her inner control phase before leeching to remove one fury point from a friendly faction war beast within one inch. Giving this list exceptional 
Fury management between the Shepherds and uh, Vale's Serenity ability. One of the things that really makes that army work well is the fact that he can Charles can run his his all of his war be so hot and still have answers so that they don't frenzy for next turn. Losing an activation on one of those war beasts is crippling when every model has to count for so much. So the succubus activates and puts dragon's fire on the Ravagor, that Ravagor animus. See an aim and a boost to hit on the Warpwolf Stalker. That'll catch a nice clump of models with the fire. Uh, looks like he will hit. And unfortunately was out of range despite the uh, to hit roll. Stormwall allows Crump to choose the direction of the deviation. And so, of course, Crump chooses directly back. Uh, with, the direct, with the distance being four inches, that puts it well outside of any kind of damage. Uh, the objective can't be targeted or affected by the fire, so the Scather Cloud will remain there, impeding Crump's uh, movement a little bit next turn. but Mostly for those Wold Stalkers. Yep. Charles doing a little consideration here now that he realizes that his range uh, guess was slightly off. Less than half an inch it looked like. So you see the spawning vessel go next. Curious to see if we'll wind up. So we have those uh, attendants moving into a nice clump formation. Spawning vessel losing its maneuverability very quickly. Yep. The carried rule makes it dependent upon its handlers to get up the field. Kind of wondering if we'll see Charles kill that clumped group of uh, attendants to give the vessel one last lesser war beast. I don't think we are going to see that immediately because uh, he wouldn't be able to get it this turn since he doesn't have a way to kill all three of them during the spawning vessel's activation. Mm. Oh, here we go. The uh, Jellius activates, yeah. flies, flies over a little bit, trying to finish off that gallows grove. See Charles using Vale's control area to determine the range. It's well within range now. Boost the hit roll. Should have no problem here. Crit fire on the tree. See a boost on the damage roll. And that'll eliminate yeah, it. Yeah, that'll do the trick. Already significantly damaged from the obliteration. So that's one less uh, channeler that Charles has to worry about. I like the way that Charles is boosting rolls that don't need to be high at all, <laughs> but it doesn't cost him anything right. to do so. He's got the fury for it. The He's got the ability to ditch it. The risk of all ones on three dice is so much less than it is on two mm -hmm. dice. We've all seen snake eyes come up plenty of times. so Especially this weekend. <laughs> this weekend yeah. has been an odd one for dice overall in all the events. Charles, again, measuring Vale's control area. Checking range to that Warp Wolf Stalker. It's Ravagor advancing such a tiny bit. <laughs> Doesn't want to be out of range like his friend was. Yeah, trying oh so carefully to be out of Kruger's control area and within range. So does hit. That'll do. And that will explode that other stone and remove uh, any teleportation, uh, any teleportation tricks for another Trump's army. Another scather in the way of some Wold Stalkers. Yep. So, as we kind of expected with that teleport up, which I still 
I think was an interesting move. I'm not entirely certain uh, what Crump was hoping for, maybe by clustering in the center, giving Charles more targets of opportunity. Yeah, that, that middle is so juicy for a fire, <laughs> fireball from a Ravagor, but being able to take out that teleportation mm -hmm. is more critical. So those stones now relegated to simply being healing factors for Crump's War Beast and potentially a little bit of fury control. Dropping fury control and management, yeah. And great roadblocks. Yes. The ability to teleport within eight inches and kind of place how you need to. Uh, I've seen, we always see that used to great effect uh, to stop things like enliven or admonition, blocking off those abilities to get away. In this case, I think we'll see it potentially used to stymie the Scythian for yep. a turn because getting somebody else to take care of that stone is still going to burn a heavy war beast activation. Charles does not have a lot of great answers to uh, not lose a, an important activation with his army being so concentrated. And the spawning vessel acolytes make better shredder makers than they do <laughs> stone breakers. See the Angelius uh, on Charles's left, walking forward, moving base to base with the uh, objective, and being switched out with a proxy base since it's going edge up on that uh, water feature. Now in the zone as well, and we should see a shot on something here. Well. It's definitely going to be shot. close because and it's going to be short because storm of the wall. storm wall. Yeah, storm wall spell makes it fall flat. Double checking, but yeah, it's in. <laughs> so that range attack will miss the Wold Stalker. Charles, take this time trying to figure out what to do next. You see the clocks there. Still a lot of time left in this game. Charles has to be a little careful. He doesn't take too long on these early turns, though. His army is compact, though, so one of the benefits is that he can take a little longer with each of his turns since he's not activating as many models, not making as many attacks, typically. He still has nearly 40 minutes, so at this point it doesn't feel like pressure. We've seen plenty of times, though, that it comes down to that pressure, down to the wire. You don't want to play so quickly you make a mistake. But you certainly don't want to play so slowly that you put yourself in bad position for later. Yeah, it's amazing how those that clock time can really work on you where you're like, you know, it feels like you've got a whole game left in 10 minutes and then all of a sudden you're staring down 30 seconds for your next round. So Charles, It's always interesting to me how people take different approaches to their time management in War Machine. Some folks kind of plan out their entire turn uh, at the beginning, and then just execute, execute, execute. Some people kind of step through it bit by bit, piece by piece. And some people seem to just play fluidly, just doing stuff the whole mm -hmm. time. So Charles asked for a clarification on the defense of the models on the hill. So we see the oh. Seraph now getting switched out for a proxy base so that his wings aren't in the way for... Uh, those two tight base-to-base -base Ravagors. Seraph just advances up, though. Oh, Slipstream here. Yep, slipstream. Moves the Ravagor up. Checks his control area again. Interesting that the Ravagor was shifted forward since it already shot. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Seraph, in order to Slipstream the Ravagor, actually does a little bit of Circu like back and forth movement. Some aerial uh, acrobatics yeah. over the Scythian's head. Just, you know, buffeting in its wings to push that Ravagor forward. I'm not sure the Scythian appreciates that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if that... And Charles just realized <laughs> that he already <laughs> shot with the Ravagor, so... That doesn't... Uh, that doesn't actually do what he was looking for there. Had he done this in a different order, he would have wound up using Slipstream, then getting the aiming bonus on the Ravagor shot. 
as he needed that little bit of movement to make sure he was in range. Well, and if he aimed, then he would have needed anything but snake eyes instead of anything but snake eyes. Yep. Still, it's one of those habit things, right? <laughs> right, right, absolutely. See the scything creep forward a little bit as well. Uh, sticking base to base, it looks like, with that Ravagor and the Seraph. Giving Vale a solid wall of Legion Warbeast to hide behind. Uh, I'm wondering if we'll see her Heracula into the Scythian. If that was what all the measuring was for. So shooting the oh, Angel Heracula's instead. to the Angel. Just Oof. further forward. Does two points of damage on the proxy-based Angelius base-to-base -base with the objective. You're going to see another obliteration. Has to be careful on this, though, because... So, obliterate at the Blackclad uh, Wayfair. Druid, Druid, Way Druid Stone Ward? Oh, that's the Wayfair. Nope, it's the Wayfair. My bad. Yep. Oh. Trip ones will miss that. So many rolls that he's boosted <laughs> just to avoid the trip ones. So we'll see if and he can get And now they get him anyway. If he gets a good deviation on the obliteration, though, he could still do some well, damage. Well, but he doesn't choose the deviation. All right. So roll low, Charles. Oh, wait. Maybe it's out of Kruger's. Oh, no, here it's we go. a spell, not a ranged attack. Yeah. So he does just roll randomly, but he rolled exactly what Crump would have picked, which is straight back. So drops. He's popping his feet. So Vale is using her feet now, doing it again. Wow. Trip six Trips is that time. <laughs> so the dice give and the dice taketh away, I guess. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> so a four-inch AOE off of those guys. Should, should catch at least one of the uh, Wold Stalkers. Pause on the clock. We're going to have the judge comes over and check it. Crump's saying that it's both of them, though. So clock starts again. So Wayfair so bites the dust. And then we need eights on the, on the uh, World Stalkers. No. And no. So just the black clad. A whole feat for that. I'm wondering what else we'll see get thrown out here. Uh, purifies unimportant, as Charles points out. He's got admonition to cast. He's got an icy grip, grip that could potentially go on something, although eight inches is... So admonition goes on to the forward Angelius. Uh, he's got refuge as well, although um, he already really activated with everything, so you could just throw refuge up for free and upkeep it next turn. So we see an attempt at icy grip, but well out of range. Or is that occultation on the Angelius and... Uh, admonition on Vale herself. I think it's occultation on Vale and admonition on that's, the Angelius. That's what I originally thought I heard. So see the Shepherd advance next. Uh, an interesting, an interesting play there to use the feet so early just to remove that Wayfarer. Granted, the removal of Hunter's Mark is critical to keeping that Stalker out of uh, charge range on the Scythian, I suppose. Well, but it's. Not removed quite yet. No, there's okay, the there's other another. one over there, but Charles was measuring several times to that location, so maybe he determined through his control area measurements that the black clad is not going to be able to hunter's mark uh, the Scythian based on its position. Hmm. I guess we'll find out here as Crump begins his, he begins his turn. Crump asking for final ruling on uh, admonition for the distance that it will trigger. The admonition is within six inches of the target model, and then it ends its movement. So Crump is considering his turn here, getting ready to begin activating his models and try and counter Charles attacks. Both Charles playing a very conservative game right now, staying as best he can outside of Crump's uh, threat ranges. He's removed the teleports now, so I was positionally would... conservative, but also kind of aggressive yep. with such an early feat. The early feat, 
to remove the black clad was not something I saw coming. Definitely the opening gambit with the shredder to remove the first stone was huge. And I think put Crump definitely on a back foot there for his first turn, which led to a positional decision that wound up with the other stones now not being able to teleport. And that lack of teleportation, I think, is going to cost him on this turn. Crump still has his feet, though. Might see him change tactics at this point and try to go for a scenario victory with Charles playing so conservatively at the moment and Crump able to score. That objective is fair game now. Uh, so he could, yeah. he could potentially use his feet, uh, bounce that Angelius out, get Kruger in for dominating the zone and score three quick with the speed. The only thing he really has to be careful of with that is the range... Uh, the range danger doesn't have to worry about Vale's double obliteration anymore. There's a lot of range threats over there, though. And even if he puts up Stormwall, Purification will just strip it right back away. Uh, we see Una move over a bit and uh, use the Acceleration Animus as a spell. Cast that on... Purification won't take away Stormwall because it's not an upkeep, so he'll have ah, to cast right, that right. every turn. I think it... At this point, based on Charles' positioning, he doesn't have to worry about the charges because of the minus speed. If he can put a solid wall of meat in front of him, which he can do with those yeah. stalkers, so he can score the, three and really the three force Charles. And really press the issue. He can really force Charles into a bad position for his next turn. That's where I would go at this point. I think you've got to move from the assassination. You move on to the scenario victory. And Charles' conservative movement, though aggressive a uh, couple of turns, might cost him that on scenario if you play so if you play it right. Druid Stone Ward and Wold Stalker unit that has the uh, accelerated leader is going to go ahead and Zephyr as a special action. They're going to forfeit movement to aim, shooting at the Angelius with the increased accuracy thanks to aiming after Zephyring. Not a whole lot of damage. Does do a bit of damage here and there. And then acceleration allows him to do a secondary Zephyr and pull back a bit. Acceleration then expires. Interesting. I Curious to see where he's going to go with this turn. If he's going to try to push for the snare, if he's going to continue with the assassination. In his position at this point, obviously I would go for go for the scenario win. I would have had those. I would have had the uh, Wold Stalkers advance forward and simply concentrate fire onto the objective. They could have done a large amount of damage to it uh, with the shots and concentrated fire, and then Zephyr back using the acceleration or Zephyr forward. I mean, yeah, if, you're press the on, issue. if you're planning on an objective or a scenario-based victory, you want to keep the pressure on. Mm -hmm. Use the feet for some degree of defense. So we've got another uh, unit of the Druid Stone Ward and Wold Stalkers. These guys are advancing. Really trying to uh, focus on that Angelius right now. Without the aiming bonus, though, it's going to be a... Well, he might be going for the objective at this point. Maybe. See a measurement of control area and then a continuation of movement. The Druid Stone Ward using that Shifting stone currently for a little bit of line of sight blocking. So Crump deciding what he's going to do next with that unit. He does so use concentrated uh, fire for the... Now we're shooting at the objective. So, so starting out first one damage does on it. Fairly well on damage. The next one has slightly higher power, so... 
deals it solid damage again with a good roll. This th this third one could damage it enough to destroy it. Nope, definitely but not. Not good. So so far, just five. But he's built up his concentrated fire bonus. Definitely hits the Angelius. So I don't think the objective shots were necessarily with an eye to removing it, more to building up that concentrated fire bonus to eliminate the uh, Angelius. Bad damage roll, though, means that he only does one point. And that's it. That's it. So only a single point on the Angelius, five on the objective, leaving it with ten. I'm not sure uh, if I'm misreading those dice from the glare or what, but I thought he had done a lot more than that. I think the uh, symbols are actually the ones on those dice instead of the sixes, as you so commonly see. If you look right now on the screen, you can see that five and then the six right next to it. But we can also see ones. It's true. Who knows what the symbols are? There's a symbol for the three or something? No, no you can see a three. A three. I, I don't know see what's a four going too. on. I, I don't I don't know. But I did misread those dice, and I apologize. Not a lot of damage there from that activation like I thought there was. So we see the stalker, stalker charges, charges the admonition Angelius. Now, at this point, you would charge the objective, force the Angelius to determine if it wanted to admonition away, still take your attack on the objective, score your point. Well... I mean, it's not like the objective is going to live through this. He forces the issue with regard to the Angelius' position, and he's still going to have no difficulty destroying the objective. The problem is, is now he's really trading that stalker for the objective, which is a rough trade. So warping for strength. Swinging on the objective now. So he does cast Sprint. Uses the Lightning Strike Animus so that if he destroys the objective, he will be able to move away. So seven points of damage on the first shot. So the Fist so is off two. the Fist attack. And there uses is the ability of the objective. Asset protection asset to keep it protection. alive. Second one, an asset projection again. So the Warpwolf Stalker has not destroyed an nope. enemy model. It will not be able to use Sprint from Lightning Strike. And the spawning vessel is now nearly ready to pop out another Lesser War Beast. Nope. So you see that the objective is alive with one right now. Crump has got to be feeling the pressure yep. of plans going awry. The uh, Shifting Stone unit uses their shifting ability to shift. Like they're going to see that Shifting Stone uh, leader throwing a rock hammer at the objective. Does Hits hit. because it is a such a low defense model. And Finishes it off. Going to check Charles for the four checks inches. if it's within range Definitely for asset in. protection. And the pot now has three bones. No damage on the Warpwolf Stalker, though. Checks control area again real quick. He's committed a lot of resources now to that objective. Yep. He needs to get one more on it. Just a single point. But he doesn't have much left to do it outside of Kruger. Either Una's already activated. Kruger's already activated. Gorax is certainly not going to... Uh, oh, no, Kruger is not Kruger's activated. Kruger is not activated. Me. He's still got Kruger. He's got the Griffins, but they're certainly not within range of the objective. He... I mean, Kruger advancing, feeding, lightninging something could, uh, I mean, could I, be the right play. Well, those Druid's uh, Walt Stalkers are now right in the way. Well, Kruger has flight. Oh, he has flight. He's got he has flight. flight. Yep. This, this version of Kruger, he's taken fully to the sky. Yeah, decent number of I'm flight models, as we mentioned, in these armies with the Griffins, the Angeliuses, the Seraph, Kruger. I'm curious if Kruger has the six inches, though, to get in the zone. I feel 
I almost feel like, well, he can telekinesis himself, I suppose, to get in the zone. That would cost him two. He could also, if he really needed to. You see the black clad wayfarer advancing. Charge something. Then he can't shoot, shoot the objective. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So we see a spray at the Ravagor. So it hits a Wold Stalker. Uh, hits and fails to kill. So whatever that symbol is, it's low. <laughs> it's a. It looks. Oh, like it's a, the two. It's the two. That thing that <laughs> we couldn't tell it was. That does not really look like a two from the well, camera. It's a. It's a division symbol with yeah. the two. Uh, that explains All right, so now why we know. I thought those were. So we see a measurement high. of control area from Kruger again. I don't know why. I don't know what the rock hammer attack was for. So the spray was an attempt to clear the Wold Stalker from the path of the Warp Wolf Stalker, who has mm. not activated yet. Who is jammed up by that. I, that makes sense. See the Griffin going forward into the zone. That Warp Wolf Stalker could theoretically, I, if someone sets it up for him, he's got one left. So get that, over to that uh, Angelius. So now we've got the Gorax advancing, just a little bit onto the hill, looking for a proxy base so he doesn't tip over. So there's the Gorax. Ah, oh, ah. We're seeing a push, force ah, power attack yeah. push to give Kruger that extra inch. That's exactly what we thought he needed was one yep. extra inch to be able to fly up there. So see a strength check. So that annoying two comes up for Kruger's strength yep. check. So he fails. He gets pushed by his Gorax. Even though he told the Gorax to push him, he still didn't want to be pushed. <laughs> well, it's just his weight. Is the Gorax able to push his weight or not? So <laughs> quick, quick clarification that Kruger could not fail. Uh, yep. So we see Kruger advancing into the zone with flight, checking his, checks control, his control area, area and will feet. likely feet here. So the shepherd, shepherd's not in the back shepherd there. So advances a little bit more forward. Still has about half an inch. So the one thing he does have to be kind of concerned with is the fact that when that spawning vessel pops out, it's uh. It's lesser war beast. That war beast is not going to be under the effect of the feet. Kruger is going to make a so there's an uh, lightning bolt attack. There's, there's an interesting uh, there's an interesting issue here where when he tries to destroy the objective, Charles can sacrifice his war beast within four inches. In for, theory, for asset protection. I can't see that happening. That Angelius is still in good shape. As Crump just said, oh. he's willing to take that risk. Yeah. <laughs> he's so willing to take that risk. Feeding first, trade. apparently, before yeah. the ranged attack. That will definitely remove the issue for uh, asset denial. Using a laser pointer to make sure that the models are being pushed directly away from Kruger as the feat dictates. So this is highly likely to give Crump three points pretty quick. So the Succubus is out of the, the feet, so he can't push it away, which means that the Ravagor is just going to bounce into the Succubus and stop. So not quite the full three inches there. And the Seraph gets pushed back three inches. So Push on the Angelius. A lot of Charles' army getting covered by this. So the push is important, but the minus two speed is the, just as important. The minus two speed is huge because it's going to stop Charles from being able to really contest that zone effectively next turn. If whatever Charles puts into the zone is killable mm -hmm. by Crump, then he will take the scenario victory. And with two stalkers right there, I don't think there's anything that Charles can put in the zone that is not killable. I did not uh, 
see this game going quite so conservatively on Charles' side. And that might wind up being a problem. We'll have mm -hmm. to see. Once Charles, once Charles had eliminated the teleportation danger, I think he needed to switch gears and be a little more aggressive in terms of being okay with trading a couple of pieces, or at least one piece for a stalker. Uh, he yeah. has so much more heavy hitting potential than Crump that trading a stalker for an Angelius or uh, a Ravagor, bringing that siding in or a different Angelius in, likely worth it. So trying to finish off this objective. And get the three points here. Kruger does have a lot of fury remaining at the moment. Boosts it. And it obliterates the objective. <laughs> Crump asks if he wants to asset protection with the Angelius. Charles, Charles says no thanks. Kruger does Kruger's check range to the Angelius for potentially some more lightning bolt action. Well, also to see if that Angelius is within threat even with its movement denied. A lot of fury for transfers, though. But he could telekinesis that Angelius if it was really a concern. Might still see that. They talk about uh, Kruger's facing to make sure that they're all on the same page here and what direction he's looking. So... Charles, being the good sport that he is, has no issue with uh, Kruger switching his facing a little bit. One of those sportsmanship style things that we see so often at these high competitive events with these players. So Kruger spending some fury points here. It's possible he's gonna put up Stormwall. Possibly Stormwall, possibly a Telekinesis that's boosted. Not a bad idea given that he's pushed Charles' army back fairly fairly decently in minus five range. Yep, Stormwall's happening. Stormwall goes up. So that should protect him from most of Charles's threat assassination from range. Vale's down to one obliteration and with three the other unit of Shifting Stones chooses to shift forward. Yeah. Makes a little wall. We talked about using those Shifting Stones once they lose one member of the unit as a means to stymie enemy movement, mm -hmm. and this certainly fits the bill. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't place them in base-to-base -base contact to possibly block line of sight from certain angles. although there is only a small gap between them. So once one model grabs that gap for line of sight, others will be hard pressed to also see through that same gap, at least not too many of them. Swamp Gobbers advance forward, cast a cloud, putting Kruger and a decent chunk of that group together. The Warp Warp Wolf Stalker, Stalker uh, advancing, I believe. Yep. Not really doing a whole lot other than getting ready for next turn when he's Going to be called upon to attack whatever's in that zone. That's Legion. And Crump uh, forgets to declare his warping for that stalker, so strength goes on automatically. Skater templates cleaned up off the table. So Charles in a difficult position here now that Crump has scored three points through a domination and an elimination of that objective. Um, so... So at, at three zip on scenario points, Charles is going to have to play a little more aggressively than he has been. Well, and with minus two speed on all of his Warbies, I, I'm not sure how aggressive he can get and make it matter. Well, uh, with Slipstream, I think he can get two in there. So the Maybe question becomes, three. can three of his no, Warbies get, be traded to just hold, hold the line? Right. And is that even going to be enough? And yeah, Warpwolf stalkers with primal, because you know Crump's not going to hold anything back. Nope, not to clear those zones. I don't know. I no obliteration. I mean, you at Charles at this point. You're looking at can I assassinate Kruger? And I don't think there's. I don't think there's a great way to do it. 
He's out of range because of Stormwall for the most part. Slipstream's not going to quite get there. Charles is asking himself the same question. Do, does he want to kill Kruger? I think the question is not do you want to kill Kruger, it's can you kill Kruger yeah, at this point? Yeah, that's, that is the question, I think. Three transfers to, to a fully, fully he healthy Stalker, a fully healthy Gorax. Yeah. I mean, the front Stalker you can't transfer to, nope. but there's still plenty of plenty of meat there to soak up any wounds. Vale can't obliterate twice. At best, you can obliterate once. I I don't know. I mean, at this point, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but you kind of wonder about dropping that about dropping your, your feet when you're Veil that early. Two of Blitz here would be huge. Well, and certainly there's little chance of Charles clearing the zone. No. <laughs> there is so much circle in that zone right now. Well, and Kruger, yeah. I mean, you can drop if you could clear it somehow. Kruger can't contest, but right. you've got two Griffins. A whole bunch of rocks. Two stones, a stone warden. Three stones, excuse me, because there's the one in the corner. A Warpwolf Stalker, that's yeah. just not going to happen, especially when you can't charge. Just thinking about all the possibilities, that one's not viable. No. The Killing Kruger one <sighs> I, I, might be the most... Ah, it, but minus five to your range, and you're, you can't advance that far, and you know... I mean, a quick, a quick check. I'm curious as to if Kruger pushed any of those Ravagors out of his control range. Yeah, possibly. But even if he did, it actually doesn't matter because the Ravagor and their control ranges are equal. So they have to be within. They're going to lose five inches no matter what. To shoot Kruger, yeah. To shoot Kruger, which is what you want to do at this point. Even with Slipstream twice. Down to speed four, get you up to six. Losing five inches, so hopefully... Hopefully you're still in his control range and you can move that six inches and then you take a couple of... But two shots isn't going to do it either. I don't know. The Angelius definitely is within range to likely shoot Kruger as well. All right, so if, we, if we've eliminated clear of the zone and we've eliminated kill Kruger, <laughs> it really just leaves the throw as much meat into the zone as you can plan of action. Bunch of slipstreams bunch of heavy beasts just thrown to the jaws of the Circle Orboros army. Yeah, and you can see Charles really thinking this out, trying to figure out. Well, so one of the things we haven't talked about is repulsion. Repulsion on the Angelius can help push some of that stuff out of the zone, including Kruger. Yeah? How's it going to get there? And even if it did, there's stuff surrounding Kruger. He'd be pushed into a model, probably. Oh no! Yeah, I think there if might could get there, there might be enough room for that Angelius' base, but but how's he going to get there? Doesn't have the it doesn't have yeah. the movement. Not even with Slipstream. All right, so we see an activation here. We see the Ravagor advancing backwards. Okay, trying to get out of Stormwall, I guess. So apparently Charles is deciding to try to clear the zone as much as possible. Well, we're trying to clear the stones, at least one of the stones in front of Kruger. So we see a boost to hit at the stone. Not within Kruger's control range, so he doesn't have to worry about the range. No Hits. problem on the hit. He did not Off use the animus. Three. But he does destroy that shifting stone. So clears one of the stones. Crump admitting that his hands are too shaky right now, so he hands the uh, the uh, key to the to our judge Tim there. Looks like that stone keeper gets clipped. Both players at exactly 27 minutes at the moment. So we see Charles boosting on the stone keeper. Stone and that keeper does the destroyed. trick with that roll. Pow 10 on the stone. Charles going for it. Boosting blast damage, 10 off, one point. Not bad for being 10 off on a boosted roll. He got an 11. 
So Stonekeeper and a stone are gone. Kruger's a little more in the open now, but what's getting to Kruger that's going to be able to get through three transfers and still kill him? Kruger's defense is not shabby either. No. Kruger has uh, defense 15 and armor 15. Yep. And Jellius, armor piercing attack isn't going to work against a small base. So that's a 16, so you're plus one to the die. See the Scythian getting proxy based here. For better ability to yep. check Vale's control area. Vale checks her control. Charles really doing the math here. Can't afford to be off on this one. I'm really curious to know if Crump started his turn last turn realizing that he could go for the three-point scenario swing or if he came to that conclusion after the Wold Stalkers failed to really deal with the Angelius because that initial start to his turn did not it, look like he was it, approaching that that conclusion. It right. still it looked like he was... It does seem like he shifted gears midstream yep. because otherwise those Wold Stalkers would be farther forward yeah. rather than Zephyr back three inches from where they even were during the turn. Yeah, you definitely want to push them forward. And again, concentrated fire on the objective would have helped quickly uh, eliminate that, minus the asset denial. But being able to shift gears on the fly, figure out a new plan as you go... A lot easier to is, do when you're looking at it on a screen. Well, but it's also a critical capability for a player. I think we're about to see our second push in this I game. I think we're right. <laughs> so Scything advances... I think in the last game when uh, Brandon shifted gears mid mid turn, yep. was very effective. Clearly, <laughs> clearly won him the game. So you see, power attack, push. All right, Angel is Scythian pushed. Well, that was close. On the, yeah, it was close. That was very close. Both those beasts being. I bet he was nervous when he saw the two. Yeah, I mean, but when that, the Angelius got a one, it didn't wind up mattering. So we see a push. 